My name is Dr. Jonathan Rosenberg. I'm an associate attending physician at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York. Today, I'm here to talk to you about the results of Imvigor 210, a single R multicenter phase two study of atezolizumab in patients with metastatic or locally advanced urothelial carcinoma, previously treated with platinum-based chemotherapy. Following failure of platinum-based chemotherapy, patients receive other cytotoxic agents, such as paclitaxel, docetaxel, or pemetrexid in the United States or vinflunin in Europe. However, these are relatively inactive treatments with low objective response rates, high levels of toxicity, and very short durations of response. What is urgently needed are better tolerated, more active therapies. PDL1 represents the ligand that binds to the receptor on T cells, which turns off the immune response. Cancer cells use this to express high levels of PDL1, both within the tumor microenvironment as well as on cancer cells. And by blocking PDL1 function with a drug such as atezolizumab, you can reinvigorate the immune response that should exist already against these cancer cells. So this is a single arm phase two study testing two cohorts of patients with metastatic urothelial carcinoma. Cohort one included patients who had not received chemotherapy for metastatic disease and these results will be reported in the future. Cohort two tested atezolizumab in patients who received prior platinum-based chemotherapy and who had progressed either during or following chemotherapy. This study tested atezolizumab due to results obtained in the phase one setting showing high levels of activity in patients with chemotherapy-resistant urothelial carcinoma, as well as emerging data suggesting that the high mutation rate observed in urothelial carcinoma research studies may predispose urothelial cancer to be susceptible to immune checkpoint blockade. So the majority of patients treated on this study had impaired performance status. Many had impaired renal function, and a significant minority had liver metastases, all of which are known poor prognostic features for advanced urothelial cancer. This was a highly comorbid patient population for whom there are no standard treatment options. The co-primary endpoints of this study were objective response by RESIST 1.1, as measured by an independent review facility, as well as modified resist as measured by the treating investigator. Modified resist was chosen to evaluate atypical responses that are often observed with immunotherapy that might not be adequately captured by resist 1.1. IC23 staining was defined as greater than 5% of immune cells staining positive for PDL1 in the tumor area. IC1 was defined as greater than 1% but less than 5% of immune cell staining, and IC0 is less than 1% of cell staining for PDL1. Objective responses were noted in 15% of patients treated with atezolizumab overall, which rose to 26% in patients who had high levels of, of PDL1 expression on their immune cells. This study also reported the fact that the median duration of response was not yet reached for those responders to atezolizumab therapy with a median follow-up 11.7 months. When we're thinking of cancer treatment, the goal of treatment is long-term durable remissions. And so in my opinion, the duration of response is a very critical endpoint, particularly when evaluating immunotherapy. In addition, many patients who have stable disease derive substantial clinical benefit with cancer not progressing for long periods of time. I believe that while objective response rate is an important endpoint, duration of response is critical when thinking about long-term clinical benefit for these patients. Looking at landmark one-year survival in this clinical trial, 48% of patients who had IC23 staining were alive at one year, and 36% of patients on the entire clinical trial were alive at one year. This compares quite favorably to historical cytotoxic chemotherapy trials uh, where the median survival was only 20% at one year. In addition, these factors hold up in patients who were treated in the pure second line setting where the median overall survival for the entire population was nine months. We were able to show that PDL1 expression was associated with the basal subtype. However, we also showed that objective response to atezolizumab was associated with luminal class II expression uh, subtype of bladder cancer. In addition, mutation burden in these tumors was evaluated using the foundation medicine assay, and we demonstrated that the presence of more mutations was significantly correlated with better objective responses in patients treated with atezolizumab. Atezolizumab was a well-tolerated treatment with 
only 16% of patients experience grade three or four adverse events, including only 2% of patients with grade three or four fatigue. This is in marked contrast to cytotoxic chemotherapy that's available for these patients. Similarly, atezolizumab did not lead to any renal-mediated adverse events, which is an important characteristic for treatments for patients with advanced urothelial cancer, as many of them have pre-existing renal insufficiency from their comorbid illness, obstructive uropathy, and prior platinum-based chemotherapy. In general, atezolizumab was a well-tolerated treatment that led to durable responses in those patients who experienced responses. Atezolizumab may represent a new standard treatment option for patients with advanced urothelial cancer. These patients have no good treatment options available at this time. Current cytotoxic chemotherapies have significant toxicity and unfortunately very low activity. With atezolizumab, patients who experience responses have durable responses that can change the course of their lives and their disease. I believe that immune checkpoint blockade with atezolizumab and possibly other therapies will represent new standards of care available for the treatment of urothelial cancer patients over the coming years.